Welcome back. Thank you very much, Peter. National Treasury has warned that South Africa faces significant risk to its fiscal outlook, including weak economic growth and uncertain revenue collection. So if government is having financial problems, what about the people? According to research done by the World Bank's Global Findex database, South Africans have a lot of financial problems with consumer debt totaling near, nearly 1.7 trillion and of course nearly as much as the government's debt of more than 2 trillion rand. So let us ask financial guru and debt counsellor Sobri Shabalala of the Big R Solutions about the dire financial straits South Africans find themselves in. So thank you very much for coming to our program. Why are South Africans still having problems irrespective of this uh, conscious uh, drive that they mm -hmm. should take care of uh, their budgets and know how to save and invest? Look, the truth of the matter is um, school does not teach about money. And it's not only South Africa, the whole world. People don't understand how money works. And I think that's where the trick is. If you understand how money works, then you'll be able to know how to do things, all right? And then because money games different, you don't have to learn it from school. I'm sure you know that the richest guys are not well-educated guys, and that tells you, all right? In other words, education does not equal richness, all right? And the trick is, these guys have 24 hours, the same as you and me, but they use it differently. So if our people can start understanding how to use their 24 hours, effectively, then they'll be able to make money. Well, at the moment, yeah. there has been a drive for more than five years that yeah. South Africa is a poor savings nation. Yeah. But we understand that South Africans are highly indebted at the moment. And yeah. being highly indebted also deters consumers yeah. uh, from saving. Mm -hmm. But they continue to spend. Yeah. Draw a line for us in terms of how they should allocate their resources. Yeah, look, uh, it's not only South Africans. I still want to stress that one. Saving people approach it wrongly. People save this way. When they get their money on monthly, they say, I'll spend first and save after. And in reality, you spend everything and you end up having nothing. Then there's nothing to save. Now, if you want to save, the best way of doing it, saving must be part of the budget. It must be part of the expenditure. In other words, you need to start with saving. If you get your thousand rand, save first and then use the remainder. Now, the research has shown that uh, the rich people, out of their income that they get, they spend only 25%. But you go to ordinary people, when they get income, they spend 100%. Sometimes, which is a little bit scary, they even spend 200%. What does that mean? That means that they are over indebted. In other words, they spend 100% of the money that they earn, then they spend another 100% of the money that they don't have in what way in the form of credit card credit cards overdraft and so on they spend the money that they don't have so it becomes a vicious cycle then this vicious cycle seems not to end anytime soon even yeah. though there is ass assistance in as far as debt counseling is concerned yes. why do we see this problem persist in terms of people not getting their finances in order you look at how they continue to spend even when they are earning less how they struggle to save even though they know that they should but in terms of investments, just a while ago we've been mm -hmm. talking about a Ponzi scheme in KZ and they are all over the country. Yeah. Why are South Africans interested and so gullible to cutting corners when it comes to investing? Now I've said the key issue is education. Now if I talk about education, you make research about the people who are having money, all of them. I'll take Richard Branson for instance. He'll tell you that he has failed many times before he makes what he made. Now, people want to be rich overnight. That's the problem. That's where the problem is. And the other thing we want to please is the Toms and the Joneses of this world. I saw a Colin driving BMW. I want to drive Mercedes-Benz, even if I cannot afford. That's not an issue. I've got a friend of mine. This guy owns about 10 malls. 10 malls in his name. He owns about uh, nine pick and pays. You know, I, I was involved in business with him. Then we were going to a business meeting in Tembisa. I said, gee, was, um, uh, we are going to a business in, uh, meeting in Tembisa. He said, no, today we are going to use my car. 
And guess what? I thought the guy's gonna bring a Porsche. He brought the old Mercedes Benz. Okay, so now let's talk about this issue yeah. of uh, people wanting to splurge and being rich overnight, yeah. and the means to get to that yeah. is through the easy way yeah. of investing. Now, yeah. when you speak to somebody about investing, people will ask you mm -hmm. about forex trading. Yeah. They will tell you about Bitcoin. Yeah. Why is it that people are interested in financial savings tools or investment tools that they really do not know about, but they would rather take a risk and take all their pension money, all mm -hmm. their severance packages. They would rather put it there so that they can make more money and you double know, it. The whole thing that of being rich overnight, that's where the problem is. Remember I said education. You know when people ask me how to make money, I said, no, just take books and learn. They said, no, you are talking something else. I want to make money now, so which is a problem. And money making is a problem. And Colin, I'm not talking about something that I don't know. I'm from there. I was, I was infected with Mashonisa. I knew all of them in Camden Park. I knew there were new ones that were coming. But as I continued to read the books, I started learning. Then I said, no, 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 maybe I need to change my behavior. But then what about the behavior of consumers? Is it changing? When you deal with the machinists, are the numbers still on the rise in terms of people who want to borrow money even though they are still heavily indebted? Well, uh, um, in our practice, as far as debt counseling, all the people that we have tried to assist, we finally came up with what you call the membership club, where we call them once, 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 once a, a year and have a whole day workshop, train them about how money works. And I bring all these guys that I talk about, guys that I know that they started from nowhere. I don't know whether you know, you know Dr. Teddy Blanchard. Uh, he started an institution called Maharish Institute here in Joburg. You know, um, I've known the guy for many years. You know, he started from nowhere, you see. And then these are people who talk to people and tell them how to start, all right? And now you can change your behavior. How did I change my behavior? It's by reading from other people. I learned from Donald Trump. You may not like him as a politician, but as a businessman, he's a brilliant businessman. All right, so what do people do now so that they can turn their finances around? I still say, learn, learn, learn. You talk of cryptocurrency. You talk of uh, Ponzi scheme and so on. If you can learn, cryptocurrency is reality, it's coming. We like it or not, it's going to be there. I've seen that Mark Zuckerberg is trying to come up with his own cryptocurrency. That tells you, in finance, you must follow the leaders. If people like Zuckerberg say, we want to go crypto. If people like Richard Branson buy Bitcoin, then that tells you something is coming. But you need to learn first before you go there. Before you can even spend your money, that's the first thing to do. Right. Thank you very yeah. much for making time to speak to us. Much appreciated. Right. We're speaking here to debt counselor as well as financial guru, uh, Mr. Sobri Shabalala of the Big R Solution.